When I was 10, my parents were divorced. I am the lone child in my family. Having remarried, both parents don't communicate with one another. My mother wed my stepfather, who is childless. My dad is the husband of my stepmother, who has a 27-year-old daughter and a 23-year-old son. My stepsister is a mother of three children, a six-year-old boy, a four-year-old boy, and a few-week-old baby boy. My dad's side of the story has always seemed to me to be a little devalued. I was raised in two different homes, one as an only child and the other as a middle child, so my adolescence was quite difficult. My stepmom never truly loved me, despite my dad's best efforts to make me feel at home. But now that I'm an adult and don't live with them, we do get along. My stepmother has a lot of problems, not just with me but also with her own children, which is why there was a lot of drama. After I became 18, my stepsister and I moved out to avoid her and my stepbrother, who she referred to as the golden child, who had been missing for about two years due to a major argument with her, but had just magically reappeared and taken back to the top of everyone's list. My dad knows she can be very crazy at times and he's told me in the past that I wouldn't put up with her baggage if I didn't love her so much. Moving on, let's talk about the most recent circumstances. My stepmom's father recently passed away, therefore they updated their will. Last night my dad gave me a call and said they were working on their wills and wanted to treat everyone fairly. I basically just said, all right because he called shortly before we sat down to dinner and I didn't really have time to think it through. He added, we were thinking of 40, 40, 20, 20 going to you. But the more I consider it, the more slighted I feel. The trouble is, as far as my dad and stepmom are aware, their dad, my stepmom's ex, is kind of out of the picture. He has been in contact with them for some time now, and he really reached out to them both once they became 18. After becoming pregnant with her first child, my stepsister decided to break up with her father rather than tell her mother that she had been speaking to her father. So she broke up with her father. My stepbrother seems to have spent some time at his dad's place after going missing. He truly seems like a normal guy who got dragged into my stepmom's crazy. I've gone to dinner there with my stepsister before, but my stepmom is unaware of any of this and speaks very poorly of their dad. She always flips things around on other people. I asked, how do you know that they aren't in their dad's will? To which he replied, he hasn't been in contact with them for 20 years. So these are my things. One, he has no idea that I'm the sole executor of my mom's will. In any case, he said that they were thinking 40, 40, 20 because I'm probably the sole executor of your mom's will and they don't have another set of parents. I'm assuming this, however, he is unaware that it was only updated within the last six months. My mom and my boyfriend agreed that my mom's will should have no bearing whatsoever on my dad's and that it is not my fault that my parents split and decided not to have any more children. Secondly, I find it annoying that they are unaware that my stepsister and stepbrother have been in communication with their father as I feel deceived and mistreated. However, I don't think it's my place to make this information public because it will undoubtedly spark trouble. It seems unlikely to me that they won't receive something from his will but maybe I'm mistaken. Three, if they felt this way, I think they could have divided it 35, 35, 30 or something a little more equitable. However, it appears to me that I am worth half as much as my stepmom's children, and it makes me feel really bad. Money is not the main concern, even yet 20% of their fortunes would probably make a difference in my life. To be honest, it is not the issue. For me, it's more about the principle. I think I disagree though because when I told my dad this he responded, but that's all this is about money, it has nothing to do with anything else. I did tell him that I didn't feel entitled to anything and that because it's his money, he should be free to do whatever he wants with it. But is it irrational of me to feel this way? I've talked to everyone about it and they all think this is crazy and that I'm being treated unfairly. This has made me worry about it more and more, to the point where I'm unable to think clearly. I would like to know what you people think. I'm trying really, really hard to look at this objectively, and I know this sounds trivial, but this is also kind of a major matter, and I don't want to say nothing when I should be saying something. Should I be quiet and avoid creating any trouble instead? If your dad passes away before her, you won't get anything because that math is obviously a compromise between them. I would just laugh and inform your dad that you would prefer it if he stopped acting like you would ever inherit any of the money if he brings it up again. 
inform him that you are tired of being asked to participate in the charade and that he is well aware of how his wife views you in comparison to her own children. To bring up the fact that you are not half a son is offensive. You know she'll win out in the end if that was the best agreement they could come to given how far away the inheritance is. Talking about money you will never see is pointless. Update. As I mentioned in my original post, I came here seeking an unbiased viewpoint since I was honestly unsure of how to feel about the issue. I wanted to approach this objectively. I did not want to appear conceited or unappreciative. I'm incredibly appreciative that I'm receiving anything at all from them. I never felt like I had a right to anything. It wasn't until my dad called me that evening and asked for my opinion that I gave the subject any attention. Just to be clear, I never told my dad how much money they should have divided between them or that I deserved more. I want to make it clear that he asked me for my opinion on this matter. He expressly mentioned to me, We are doing our wills, and we don't want to upset anyone. We are thinking 40, 40, 20, 20 going to you. Do you think this is fair? The more I discussed it with others and gave it more attention, the more deceived I felt. Which is why I sought clarification on the situation, which is why I came here. Before the update, I would like to clarify that my dad is not a bad guy in this circumstance. Though others may perceive him that way, we are actually pretty close. Perhaps that was the source of my dilemma. And he's been a wonderful father to me forever. Yes, he is occasionally a butt, but who isn't? And when it comes to my stepmother, he might be a touch weak, as one commenter put it. However, I suppose that's what happens when two people fall in love, particularly after your children have grown up and left home. For my boyfriend, I know that I would do everything in the world. Having said that, we are childless, so I'm not sure who would be more important in this situation at this time in my life. I believe that everyone's best interests are what matters most, and I know that my dad feels the same way. I'm aware that all he is attempting to do is to treat everyone fairly. Yes, I felt like the outsider in practically every occasion, and felt slighted by that side of the family for more than half my life. Being sternly treated in this manner, since my mother was on the other side of the situation, my dad is the happiest person he knows. He essentially simply wanted to keep everyone happy and keep the peace. Is it really his fault for that? I'm not sure. I am extremely grateful to have a mother who is willing to go to such lengths for me. Furthermore, my step-siblings may not possess that. But if they didn't keep their relationship with their dad a very dark secret, I do believe they would. However, that is not my concern. All right, let's get to the real update. This is probably just as wordy. I speak a lot. My dad and I went to lunch today. I had a list of questions before I entered. Basically. I was curious as to whether they were discussing separate or combined wills and whether the 40-40-20 ratio was mentioned in his will. What would happen if he passed away before my stepmother? Does she inherit everything and then have the freedom to alter the will at that point? If such is the case, how can he be certain that she won't entirely omit me from the will? Does he believe that keeping the option available is fair? In addition, the fact that my step-siblings haven't spoken to their father in 20 years was a factor in their decision. Whether or not I told him that was going to be up to me at game time. Simply put, that wasn't true. My stepsister had given me permission to tell him if necessary. But I decided to keep it a secret because I didn't think it belonged there. Telling is not a secret to me. He claimed that both of their assets were included in one will. I suppose that's a shared will and that everything would belong to my stepmother if dad passed away before her, and vice versa. He stated she would never change the will at that time, and give her kids anything when I questioned what was preventing her. That's not the type of person she is. Perhaps so, I replied, but what's stopping her from doing this legally? Technically, nothing is, he said. He claimed it doesn't matter because he would never marry someone with such morals when I asked if he felt it was fair. But when I asked if he could understand my point, he replied that he could and that he would talk to my stepmother about it, though I'm not sure where that will end up. It could also be important to mention that I asked him who came up with the 40-40-20 ratio. It was his, he asserted, not hers. I don't know if he's telling the truth or lying to protect her. I guess both of the answers to that question are frustrating, so I'm not sure what I was searching for. However, that is what it is. 
I decided that it would be preferable for me to be the bigger person now that I had the answers to these questions. I am well aware that they can do with the money what they choose, never considered doing otherwise. It's just the way it is. If it implies that they believe I should receive less, do I concur? Frankly, I don't think it would have mattered if I did or didn't, nor my cash, nor my company. I felt that if I didn't share my opinion with my dad, I would regret it. I'm of the opinion that it is what it is now that I have. I don't personally have the energy to debate it. I simply don't give a damn. I live a life filled with enough tension and concern. Money was not the main concern. It had nothing to do with the money. I didn't feel angry that my siblings were receiving more money than me. It seemed like I was worth half as much to them as my step-siblings, and I felt slighted by that. My dad isn't like that, as far as I'm aware, and I never believed he was acting intentionally. Had he desired to cause me harm, he would have simply kept it a secret and left me in the dark when he passed away. However, he persisted in saying that he wanted to be fair and asked for my opinion, so I gave him my honest assessment. Even so, I felt a little taken advantage of, but that's just how I feel about that family. I don't think that will ever truly change. I'm the outsider. And that was kind of confirmed by this circumstance. On the other hand, my mom views me as the center of her universe. It's an intriguing dynamic that, even after all this time, is still kind of difficult to get used to. The fact that my parents separated and never had another kid is not my fault. My parents' decision to share custody is not my fault. As a result, I was only able to spend half of my time at each location because I had to relocate frequently. It's not my fault that my dad married a lady with two other children and a lot of problems. And it's not my fault that my mom married a man without children. I didn't have any influence over any of these things, and I don't expect to have any control over this either. I told him everything. I felt better after expressing it and I felt the urge to get it all off my chest. I don't think he understood that I felt this way my entire life. He said he was sorry for hurting my feelings and that this was never their aim, but I knew that wasn't the case. He continued telling me that this isn't how he truly feels, even if he respects that this is how it might be interpreted. Even though he would never say it in front of the other children, he told me he loved me, that I am his only daughter, and that he would sacrifice everything for me. I believe that I simply took everything more personally than necessary. However, my dad also stated that he was only considering the financial aspect of it and didn't consider how it would make me feel personally. Ultimately, I've made the decision to move on from this. After speaking with my dad, I feel like I was honest about how I felt, and he was too, so I think that's all I needed to hear. I'm not sure if they will do anything or not, it's just not worth the struggle. As I've said a hundred times, it was never about how much money I was or wasn't getting. My stepsister and I have always been close, and I don't see that changing. We are still close today. I informed her that if this led to any issues in our relationship, she would give up her portion when we were discussing it. I replied unequivocally that's not the point of this, and I would never hold her accountable or have resentment toward her for anything. We're doing fine. We've never been close, and my stepbrother and I don't think that will change either. He's a strange guy. My stepmother and I have never been close, and it's unlikely that we will ever be. I've made the decision to devote my time, energy, and affection to the people who are important to me and who return the favor. I've had enough of making additional efforts for people who don't give a damn. That concludes our discussion. Ultimately, I'm letting it go. P.S. I half-jokingly requested the automobiles in addition to the 20%. In order to get closer to retirement, he indicated he would sell the cars. I said, he sucks. Nevertheless, he responded, my boyfriend can have all his tools. I apologize. Both your father and I are poor, weak people. I am a father myself. It's just that you've been conditioned to think poorly of him. He is a failure as a man in general and as your father specifically. You become a parent for the rest of your life. It is important for you to realize that your own happiness is dependent on your children's physical and mental well to some degree. In essence, they are prioritized. Just as your father is willing to forgo any possible advantages that a respectable bequest can offer to your happiness in the future, he also sacrificed your upbringing in order to pursue a connection with this woman. He doesn't think highly of you. For my part, I can't see ever being in a position where I wouldn't stop at nothing 
to ensure my own kid's happiness and success. He is failing you, and he has. That should undoubtedly be considered in any relationship you have with him.